Welcome back to another video. My name is Johannes Bartel and I'm in love with options trading. In this video, I will explain three basic options strategies that I use to generate income. There's so many different ways of utilizing options, but in this video, I will only cover call options. So let's just dive into it. First of all, you can either buy or sell a call option. But what does that mean? So when you buy a call option, as the word implies, you have to pay to actually receive the contract. This contract allows you to purchase a specific stock in the future for a specific price. You don't have the obligation, but you have the option to do that. You'd wanna buy a call option if you're very bullish on a stock and you believe that its value will increase in the near future. Now that you have obtained this call option, what can you do with it? So you can either sell that contract for a higher price in the future if the stock goes up in value or by expiration date, you can exercise your right to purchase the underlying stock at the strike price that you determined when you bought the, uh, the call option. Here's a fun call option that I purchased last week. Um, and I'm saying fun because I usually don't do those short call options, but it was AMC and the volatility was so high that I just couldn't resist. So as you guys can see here, I purchased the call with the strike price of $60 and the expiration date of June 4th. Again, this, this by the way is very risky and I don't usually do that, but the volatility just, I, I couldn't resist. So I purchased 14 contracts at $3.15, which cost me $4,410. I immediately placed a sell order to sell my 14 contracts at $3.60 per contract. About 90 minutes later, my options sold and paid me $5,040. This trade netted me $630. So let's talk about this entire thing. I purchased a call option with the strike price $60. So I was anticipating or I, I bought this contract with the belief that AMC will increase in value over the next couple hours. Let's talk about risks. If AMC did the opposite, my contracts instead of $3.15 per contract would have probably been worth $2.80. So that would have lost me 35 cents on each contract, which is a lot of money. Luckily, it went the way I expected it to do and I made money. But the risk for this specific trade was that AMC did the opposite, you know, tanks, loses value, and then my contracts are worth nothing because the expiration date was exactly on that date. To sum it up, you wanna buy a call option if you believe the stock will increase in value. Now that we know what buying a call means and what it actually does, let's see what happens when we sell a call. I'm specifically talking about a covered call. I'm going to explain to you how to sell a covered call. So if I hold 100 shares of a specific company, I can use those 100 shares and sell a covered call, meaning I'm willing to sell my 100 shares that I own in the future for a specific price. And for that commitment, I receive a premium, a payment upfront immediately as soon as I sell that contract that will stay in my bank account no matter what. So when I sell my contract, I immediately receive my premium that stays in my bank account and now I can invest that or do whatever, I can withdraw it, I can do whatever I want with that money. My 100 shares are now frozen in that contract. And then we have different outcomes on expiration date. So number one, the stock price is higher than my strike price on expiration date, which means I have to sell my 100 shares at the strike price. So technically I'm missing out on all those gains. I still receive, I still keep my premium, but I also have to sell my 100 shares. Now I have cash in my account and I can start from scratch. And outcome number two, the stock price ends up below my strike price, which means I don't have to sell any of my shares, but I still keep my premium. This is the optimal you know, situation if you just want to sell a covered call for additional income. So when do you do that? For, there are so many different reasons why you would sell a covered call. For me personally, I love selling covered calls on growth companies because I invest in growth companies, but they don't pay dividends. And so basically I'm just waiting for that company to increase in value over the next couple of years. But until then, and until I sell, I don't see any cash flow. So I like to use those companies and sell covered calls on them to just generate more income and basically I can use that money and invest it into the, into the same company again. Here's a great example. I own 3,300 shares of Riot um, and my average cost basis is 
$34.80. I truly believe by the end of the year, we will see another bullish run from Bitcoin, which will then bring Riot back up to like, I don't know, maybe 60, 70, $80, who knows? Um, but again, this is, you know, just my guess. Uh, I'm very bullish on the stock. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin. That's why I don't want to sell any of my of my shares at the moment. But like I mentioned, I want to still generate income from those shares, from that money that's sitting within the company now. So basically, I accumulated a lot of shares that I don't want to sell. But at the same time, I want to make money with them. So here's what I did. I sold a call with the strike price of $43, even though the stock price just dropped drastically within two days. This contract is way out of the money, which is why I only got paid 22 cents per contract which is $726 for about eight days. If I had lowered the strike price, I would have increased my premium that I would have received for that contract. But at the same time, I didn't want to risk anything. Maybe, you know, Elon tweeting something positive about Bitcoin saying Bitcoin to the moon now because he found the solution or whatever. And then Bitcoin just having like a mini bull run and then it brings up riot and I have to sell all of my shares. Although right now it doesn't look like this is going to happen anytime soon. By just selling covered calls, I generate income, which I can use for whatever I want. And my money's not just sitting in that growth company waiting for the company to, you know, increase in value. Last but not least, I want to talk about LEAPS. LEAPS stands for long term equity anticipation securities. Sounds complicated, but it's very simple. A leap option is basically a call option, but with one characteristic. It has to be longer than one year. So the duration of that contract has to be longer than one year. So it's considered a leap option. You can either buy calls or puts, but in this video, I will only cover calls. So a call leap option. I'm going to jump in and give you the best example ever. This is my worst option that I've ever done in my life. I People say you can't time the market. I think I truly timed the market perfectly wrong. I purchased a leap call option on Apple at Apple's pinnacle. It was at $135 and I was like, okay, within the next year and a half, it will go up. So right now, this is what my call option looks like. So with this contract, I have the right to purchase 100 shares of Apple at $135 in a year and 10 days from now. The risk for this option is that I'm $2,465 short and if Apple doesn't surpass $159 on expiration day, my option will be worth nothing. If in case Apple increases in value over the next couple months, my option will be worth more. So whenever I feel like, okay, my option is now whatever increased by $1,000 and I feel like I want to sell it, I can then sell my leap option but I don't think I will. I just want to hold on to my leap option until next year because I truly believe that even though right now we are in a weird um, situation with inflation and everything hitting us really hard, but I still don't believe that within the next year we'll fall into a bear market. I'm just very positive on the market still. So why would you buy a leap option and not Apple shares? If I want to be able to have control over 100 shares of Apple right now, I need to, to spend $12,600 on Apple to own 100 shares. If I don't have $12,600 to spend on Apple, I can just buy a leap option if I believe that Apple is going to go up in value and just say, okay, I'm going to spend $2,500 and have the same thing. I, I still have, you know, power over 100 shares because in the future I can either buy 100 shares at $135 or I just sell the contract for a higher price in the future. As you guys can see, all three strategies I actively use within my portfolio. So it's not something I just, you know, read online. I was like, yeah, you can't do that. I actually do that. Um, I also just wanted to focus on call options. If you wanna see put options, like an entire video on put options, let me know in the comment section below. And if you wanna join me on Patreon to see my financial moves, I post there daily and give my thoughts because it's way easier to just like type it in like blog style than creating an entire video about it. So the link is in the description below. And also don't forget to grab your free money from the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.